Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we are continuing our series on the new Edge browser control. In today's video, we're going to add back and forward buttons to our browser. This, of course, is part five of my series. So if you haven't watched parts one through four yet, what are you waiting for? Go watch them now. There's the link. You can get started with part one. A little QR code there. You can scan that little guy. All right, go watch those and come on back. Okay, back to our browser. Another standard feature in most browsers is a back and forward button. So if you go to a particular link, let's say this one here, and you wanna go back to where you were, you click the back button up here. Now, some browsers, if you hit the backspace key, it will also take you back. It appears as though that doesn't work just in the Edge browser control. So we're gonna make our own. Let's go to design view. And I'm going to take this label, make it a little smaller. I'm going to actually just get rid of the my URL. Let's just call the URL up here. Usually when I'm building a form for myself to use, I usually leave the label the same as the field name so that when I'm coding, I can see that, okay, that's my URL. But if it's something for, you know, public consumption for my users, then I'll make these obviously nice and pretty. But let's just copy one of these buttons here, copy paste, and I'm gonna put a, just like a back left, uh, less than sign or whatever in there. And we'll make it small, like about that big, and we'll stick it over here. Resize it a bit, like that. You could put a picture in there, you can do whatever you want. Let's open up its properties, and let's call this the back button. Back BTN. Right click, build event, and oh, okay, this is interesting, this will happen. Notice how my other buttons, I had that function in here, that load page function. If you do the build event and it sees that in there, it's gonna bring up the expression builder because it sees an expression in there. So we're gonna come over here with this on click event and we're just gonna delete this. Delete, and then you can click the dot, dot, dot button here, or you can go again back to the build event. All right, here I am in my back button code. We're gonna go WB. Now, in order to get the browser object to do something, you wanna execute a command inside the browser. You can execute any JavaScript command within reason. There are, there are some you can't. But generally, you use the execute JavaScript command. And then inside of quotes, what is the command you wanna execute? Now, if you're familiar with JavaScript, some of you are, some of you are not, don't worry. I wasn't familiar with JavaScript at all until I started building my own website. So, um, but here's the command you want to send to the browser: history dot back open close parentheses, and that's it. That will send the history dot back command to the browser and say, "Hey, I want you to go back to where you came from. Return from whence you've came." Right? Save it. Throw a debug compile in there. Let's close the browser. Open it back up again. All right, let's browse to my site, go somewhere else, and then hit the back button. Ready, go. And there we go, look at that. All right, look at that, do it again, goes back to the about blank. All right, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. How about the forward button? Same thing. Copy this guy, put it right there. Maybe just get them right up next to each other. Right, switch this to that. Open up the properties. All right, what is this one? The back button. This one will be the forward button. Forward button. And event or right click build event. All right, wb.execute JavaScript. And it's the same thing. It's history.forward. Okay. Save it. Debug compile. Close her down, save it, close it, close it, open it, go somewhere, go somewhere else, back it up, forward, back, forward, curly, straight, curly, straight. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Now, just like in these buttons where we made our own function, right, to load a page, we're gonna be using that execute Java stuff a lot. 
So very similarly, I'm gonna make my own function in here so I can just put the JavaScript command in the button itself without having to have a separate event for each button. Okay, so right in here, private. Actually, let's make it public because other forms might call this. Public function, let's call it exec Java. And we're gonna send to it a JavaScript command as a string, right? And then in here, all this is gonna have to say is, we're just gonna copy this, paste it up here, right? We're gonna say, I want you to wb that execute JavaScript, whatever the JavaScript command is. Okay, and now we don't need this. In fact, I am going to, let's just cut it out here. Cut, delete that, and find the other one. Here's the forward one, right? Delete that. Now we can put exec Java in our buttons. Okay. Save that. Come on back out here. Let's go to the back button first. All right. On click, I'm going to zoom in, shift F2, equals exec Java. What's the command? It's going to be history.back. Just like that. All right. So we're going to copy that one now. And then come over here, paste it in here, and it's going to be history. Whoops. Paste. <laughs> History dot forward. Okay, hit okay. We're gonna save it, close it, close it, open it back up again, and one more time. Browse, go somewhere else, back, forward, same thing. All we're doing now is we made it so that we don't need a custom function, or excuse me, a custom event for each button. We're gonna use that exec Java a lot to push values to forms, to do all kinds of stuff, right? To click buttons with code. All right, let's take a look at one more thing. All right, let's go to my PCResale.net website. Okay, here we are, PCResale.net. I got a links page. This is, this is just my training website, by the way. All right, I teach web design in some of my classes. All right, go to the links page, and here's some different links that I have on my links page, for training purposes, of course. Let's try to click on this link here to go to my 599cd.com site. And, oh, wait, what just happened? It happened off screen. It launched the site in my external Edge browser. What's that all about? Why didn't it load in the browser itself? Well, when you're using the Edge browser, you can only browse to other links in the initial site that you opened. All right, you can go to About Us, you can go back to the home page. You can go to the links page as long as it's on this domain. If it's not, you have to set up something called a trusted domain list. We're going to cover that in the next lesson. Don't forget, folks, if you like learning this stuff, if you like programming, check out my developer lessons on my website. I got lots of them. I'm just getting ready to release Access Developer Level 45, which covers, it's part two of my building the ribbon, where we customize the ribbon and we work on the right-click pop-up menu. So I'll check that out and put a link down below. But that's going to do it for today, folks. That's your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time for part six. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. 
I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.